Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, beloved brethren. You are welcome to the, the two, the second section of the National Restoration Program series of messages. This is a part of the messages at the Ankpa National Restoration Program. February 17 to 19, 2022. The Lord bless you as you listen keenly. Please, and if this message blesses you, please don't forget to share with uh, other people, your contact and other group you belong to social media. And then please try to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get other messages that uh, we have actually, the Lord have used us to minister in various locations. And then you can also be part of the National Restoration Program the labor to see Nigeria restored. You can be part of this great labor. The Lord bless you as you join forces with us to push forward to for the restoration of our nation, Nigeria. Thank you and God bless you as a listing in Jesus' name. Amen. It's because he's still speaking about what he said he would do. Amen. He's still speaking. He has not stopped speaking. It's not, it's not as if the Lord said something before and he's not saying anything again. He's still speaking about this nation, Nigeria. And that is why some of us have decided to hold on to the horns of the altar and say, Lord, concerning what you have said, after Nathan came and gave David prophecy, you know what David did? The Bible said, David went to the temple and threw himself before the Lord. And say, oh God, the thing you said you would do, and now you have decided to show me kindness. Say, please, Lord, perform your counsel over my house. You know, even when Solomon misbehaved, God did not turn his back completely because of the spoken word, the assurance he gave to David. Amen. When in just uh, 2000 and, uh, 2000 and 2021, we had a meeting. The no, 2020, we had uh, the National uh, uh, Northern Christian Leaders Retreat, which we convened in Jaws, and we gathered uh, Christian lead, youth leaders from various parts of Nigeria. I think we had only two persons from Koki. The Koki was the least. And the Lord began to speak. As I was ministering the word of God, God opened the eyes of one of the young men there, and God began to show him things. And later God began to speak in clear terms. He says, my banner has been lifted over this nation, Nigeria. He says, and I will reign from the north to the south in Nigeria. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A man saw a vision, and he saw in that vision, the map of Nigeria was folded up, was folded up. And the Lord told him by prophecy, said, I have rolled the way the old Nigeria. I'm about to unfold the new Nigeria. Pastor Chooks, okay, you saw, can you tell all you saw during the feast of rapture? Please come and tell us what the Lord showed you. We've, in every of our meetings, God opened people's eyes to see things about what he intends to do. That is why you must be resolute. That is why you must be confident. The word of the Lord is a sure word of prophecy. He's not a man that he can lie. The day the Lord spoke to me, he says, as I did to Babylon, so will I do to Islam. He says, I will crumble Islam from where it has grown to. It shall become a plane. Amen. So we are not just saying what we feel excited to say. We are re-echoing what we hear in the realm of the spirit. And we know there shall be a performance. Amen. Because we have come to believe these things. And the greatest thing the devil could do to rob the people of their destiny is to make them not believe in their destiny. So that he will now recruit the people to begin to walk against their own destiny. And I pray for us, may we not walk against our destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because let me tell you something. If this generation of believers in Nigeria are not ready to, to come to a place of positioning in order to labor, to bring to bed the prophetic word of God of Nigeria, a generation will come that will, that will kick into these things. And that's why you see me writing. I write a lot. 
I have over 70 books already written. I have 20, almost 26 books now in print. I don't write for fun. I write based on the pardon from the Lord. Take time and read the books. You see that? It is not book by that, that ordinary men wrote. One of our books, Avoid the Rose to Hell, my, uh, the editor there in Kaduna, before, uh, she was in, uh, in, a lecturer in uh, a teacher in command. She was teaching English. Now she's an adult investor now. I gave her one of our books to, to proofread. And early hours of the morning, my phone rang, she called me. He said, Pastor, how did you hear, how did you know this thing that I wrote in this book? Did it mean that Jesus sat back, sat down face to face and began to dictate for you? He said, because I've not heard this kind of things before. And I said, no. I have the mind of Christ. He gives me burden and I write based on burden. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to rise. The, the Caleb and Joshua, what did they say? They said, for we are what? We are well able. Truly they are giants in the land. But we are what? We are well able to take the land. We are well able. And the Bible said, for they had another spirit. Some versions said they had a different spirit. Ten people said they cannot take the land, but two people believed in what Jehovah has spoken, and they take the land. Eventually, the land was taken. Amen. So one of the things we are trying to do is to get men who believe with us that the Lord cannot lie. Men who put their life on the line and says what God says must be. Not, to, not in another generation. My vow is that I will live to see the caliphate collapse in Nigeria. Amen. My vow is that I will live to see Islam uprooted from this nation. Because it has been prophesied that Nigeria is the burying ground for Islam. It's been prophesied. The Lord, the word of God has gone forth ahead of us. And Paul will tell Timothy, 1 Timothy 1 verse 18, he says, Son, Timothy, he says, Remember the word of prophecy that have gone forth over you, and by this prophecy, he said, That thou mayest make it a good warfare. One of the cardinal reasons why the word of Lord of Nigeria is delayed is because we have not labored with this prophecy. We have no war with these prophecies. And when you read our books, the book of Rosa Nigeria, I, I, I outlined the, the, the reasons why these prophecies are lingering. There are one? reasons, very cogent reasons why they are lingering. It's just that some people are getting weary, and some people believe they are begging in a soul that they talk. Right? There, there is one of the, you know, Dr. wrote to me, the one who will co host the program together. At the point he had given up, he said, Moses, I have heard this promise for too long. He said, I belong to the CSMs and many groups in the early 80s and then in the 70s when most of the promises came, but I cannot trust them again because I have not seen them. But I tell you, he's changed now. You know what he said now? He said, Moses, we want to organize another minister's conference this year again. I told him, sir, you know what it was, it cost to organize that one. He said, go and do your budget. Come to it, Bill. We'll pay all the bills. Now they say, we're going to pay all the, just give me the budget, we'll work and pay the bills. We want to bring, because he has beginning to see something now. So let our hearts be encouraged. Please, can you tell us what, what the Lord told you when you came to the, or what you saw when you came to the Feast of Rapture? Yeah, the second day, after the second day, the second night, the third day morning as I woke up by Face them, uh, so that they can see your, they can see your face. Read yeah. this one or no, the feast of Rapture. No, it was not here. He came to Lagos for our last ministers' conference. Yeah. He was in Lagos last two weeks for our ministers' conference. So the feast of Rapture, feast of Rapture. So that uh, I, I that morning I woke up. I think I was in a revelation and I was going somewhere and the whole street we were, you know, we are painted uh, Nigerian. Uh, color, green, white, and green, with new Nigeria inscribed uh, on the walls. I saw vehicles, like, uh, as uh, branded uh, vehicles, right. like uh, campaign, ve campaign vehicles, where they brand their, their vehicles, all of them printed green, white, green, with uh, new Nigeria inscribed on all of them. Even the commercial vehicles, all of them were having the same color, with new Nigeria inscribed on them. Praise the Lord. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
So the God who showed it is able to, but we will have several of such kind of people having that kind of revelation because of a word they have heard. You know, the spirit will work with what you hear to produce a vision for you. <laughs> Amen. What do I say? It is based on what you hear that the spirit of God used to work to produce vision. You know why in many churches people don't catch vision of going to heaven or vision of rapture again? Do you know why? Because they don't preach rapture in their churches. So, but if you're in a church where they preach rapture and heaven every time, the Spirit of God walk through the things you hear to give you a vision. <laughs> Amen. If you're wondering why have I not seen picture of rapture, picture of heaven, it's because they are not talking about heaven in their church again. They're not talking about rapture. So people don't get vision of rapture. They don't get revelation about rapture again because it is the word that the Spirit used to walk. Hallelujah. You know, from our discussion, from the from the contribution this morning, it is evident that the the Muslims, amen, and the caliphates through the indigenous Muslims in the land are strategically working towards the total takeover of Angba and the Igala land. Amen. It's evident from our discussion this morning, the reactions. It is evident that there is what? There is strategic labor. There are what? There is a strategic effort ongoing to do what? For Islam to what? To take over Ampa beginning at the whole of Igala land. Because one of our brothers said uh, that uh, whatever want to happen in Igala land, it always starts from where? From Ampa. So if the positive start from Ampa, the negative will go. <laughs> They too have known that Angba is strategic. Mm. So if they can take over Angba, then they can take over the entire Igala land. Mm. And that is why you told us now, they told you that the, 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 the king, the paramount ruler here, told you properly. No mm. He said no church should be given land. No church should be given land. Mm. Amen. So you discover that the, the people of the land, they have been used by the caliphate as what? As a means to an end. And you know, what they are targeting is that at the long run, when they finally break through and take over the land, you know what they do? They will install a full animal as an enemy of Angba. And then the Igalat will now become, they will become their world, their, their, world, their slaves. Today, Ilori and Kwara State, you know what they have is an enemy of Ilori. Enemy of Ilori is not the Yoruba he's a full animal, the family of Zulu Gabari family. They rule over the Yorubas. They bring him from Sokoto to come and rule them. So they've actually, you know, you know, you know, been able to put fix themselves in the system. So they are the one ruling over the indigenous of, of, of the Lord. And that is what they want to do everywhere. So, but they always use the indigenous ones whom they have won, whom they have gotten as a tool, as a means to an end. Amen. So all you see in the land, the shoe shiners, the mequakwas, the medebino. And what do you call them? Who again? They are Chamba boys. All of them, they are on what is called the Al Hijra. What do I call it? Al Hijra. Hijra is a word in, 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 in Islam that means migration for conquest. I didn't come with many of my Islamic books because I don't I didn't have it for you to carry much load. I wrote, I've written about that in some of our books on Islam. Amen. The Hijra, you know, the word is, is, is uh, Hijra came from the movement of Muhammad from Mecca to Medina, as a result of which Medina fell to Islam and became today Medina, which means the city of the Prophet. So the Muslims prepare from different particular places where they are and move periodically on what is called the Hijra to a place where they intend to conquer. So whenever you begin to see the Muslims begin to flock a particular location, what they call it is called Hijra or Al Hijra. Amen. So it is actually migration for what? For conquest. And that is why they are inviting Muslims from every other part of Africa to come so that they can be able to overrun Christians in Nigeria. So, and they know that the Igala land is very strategic. And we come to Igala land, Angpa is very strategic. It's not only Angpa, even in Ida. Every corner of Ida now, you see Hausa boys, Fulan, Hausa Fulan, boys everywhere. They are selling everything. They are taking over the business from our people. They are selling tomato that our women used to sell before now. They sell okra. They sell pepper. They sell egusi. Amen. Every business now they are into it. 
they are doing touch every business they are it's it is what it is a takeover agenda it's agenda takeover economically and as they are coming they are registering them in your pulling tool so that they can vote and have number you they come also with a political takeover so there is a strategic and deliberate effort that is what that is ongoing and we also we must be strategic deliberate and sacrificial enough one day, we were having a meeting in Kaduna, and one of our head, that means an Ingalama. So when he fin finished the meeting, he was going home. And then he said, when he was going home, he saw two house boys. They were, they were just as if they were relaxing. So the Spirit of God told him, stay somewhere and hear their conversation. And he was saying them speaking. And they were saying, very, very soon, we'll take over. This one said, me, I'll take over. Me and Amigo get television here, from here to here. This was where we'll take over, and Amigo stay from here to here. They were discussing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because as they are here, they are what? They are wish, they are what? They are enchanting. What do I say they are doing? They are enchanting, they are invoking, they are strategizing, they are scheming on how to what? How to completely take over. Amen. And then a lot of things are on the ground going on. A lot of things are going on. And we have said two things today. I said, I spoke about the seven things we needed. Amen. So we need a daring faith, a confrontational faith to be able to what? To be able to collapse the caliphate and sustain a victory. And we say this morning, we need what? We need an outpouring of the spirit of God. We need what? It is actually the spirit that is going to comfort is called the spirit and power of Elijah. When you read my book, one of my books, I explain what that means. Amen. The Lord need to give us such an anointing that Elijah had. Because the Bible is speaking in, in the book of Malachi chapter 4. He said, before the great of the Lord, he said, Elijah shall come. He said, actually connote the outpouring of what? Of the spirit and what? And the power of Elijah. A, 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 a time, there is, the, the last revival that will herald the rapture of the church is actually an outpouring of the spirit of Elijah. Power of Elijah. Spirit and power of Elijah. It will raise a people that we operate in the dimension that Elijah operated. Amen. They will radically preach the gospel everywhere. Amen. Praise God. And we also talked about, uh, we started, we looked at two out of uh, the 16 uh, steps. And we say the first prophetic step is what? The first step to collapse the caliphate is what? Is that we must what? We must be prophetically what? Engaged. I would say there was a prophetic declaration and prophetic actions. Amen. So, and you were talking about what they did, how the how somebody saw a vision where they what they kill a ram, and they buried the ram mm. alive, mm. and then decree no more, no more crusade, no more prayer, and they said, and the team begin to be effective over the land, and the prayer group you said the prayer group scattered, mm. and then the crusades, no more seed. People were not coming up to say God give them body to go to and do crusade and buy him, because now. Until we also become more prophetic than they are not going to succeed. We must become more prophetic than they are. We don't need to bury cow. We don't need to bury ram. But there are prophetic engagement that must be involved in this battle. As we saw from the book of Isaiah chapter 20 this morning. And then we talked about the issue of war. The second issue. The issue of the fact that we must raise a 24 hour prayer and word and priesting in our land if we must be able to succeed. Amen. Because when you raise that prayer altar, the Lord will be revealing their secret and you'll be countering and be spoiling all their charms and everything they are doing. Amen. So we are going to proceed this uh, afternoon. Are we all with our books? Amen. We are continuing from where we stop. We are still looking at the 16th step to, to collapse the caliphate and then restore our nation. So we are in page. Sorry, some of you that. We are in page uh, thirty. We are in page thirty. Amen. Those of you who are not around, we are taking a teaching from this book. The book is five hundred naira, but if you don't have it, you can take it now. I borrow you. So go through. When we finish, you return it. I, I think he has now, but his own is at home. So you can borrow now. When you finish, you return it. So if you don't have, you can you can use it. When you finish, you return it. But if you want to possess it, you will use five hundred to possess it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to page 30. 
We are looking at the third and the fourth prophetic step. Fourth and third and fourth prophetic step to collapse the caliphate. Are we all there, page 30? <laughs> step three is to purge ourselves and our land of wordom. Of what? Of wordom. That is idolatry and dry immorality. Amen. If we are going to collapse the caliphate and witness the restoration of our land, beginning from our own indigenous land to our nation, we must purge ourselves and our land of world. What do I call it? World. World. A word. Amen. Amen. We must purge ourselves and what? And our land of water. If not that, we are not going to succeed. No. When in Numbers chapter, beginning from chapter 22, the people of Moab, they saw the, 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 the victorious journey of the people of God from Egypt and how Jehovah delivered the people of God from Egypt. Amen. And how they were coming on their way and they were conquering nations and kingdoms and they were unstoppable. You know what they did? Because the enemy understand the power of prophecy. They went and hired a false prophet, an enchanter, a diviner, to come and curse Israel for them. They, they to do what? To curse Israel. And this is what the Muslims have been employing over the church and over our land. The principle of, 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 of crippling, raising altars and raising men to speak against the land with a with sacrifice in their hands. So, Balak, Balak didn't want to go initially, but at the long run, because of the reward, he decided to go. And when he came, he asked that altar should be raised for him. And when this altar was raised for him, from this altar that had received sacrifice, he began to prophesy against the people of God to cripple them spiritually. Which is what they did to your prayer, to your prayer group. It was crippled spiritually. Amen. And then he prophesied and prophesied. Each time he's opened his mouth to prophesy against the people of God, his mouth will be spiritually and, and, and what? And supernaturally torn around. And he began to bless the people of God. And Balak was angry with Balaam. And a long run, Balaam told Balak, he said, Come, it is not my doing. Though. So long as iniquity is not found in Jacob, there is no divination against my enchantment against him. And Balaam now advised Balak. He said, Man, if you want to succeed against these people, you must make sure that their God become angry with them. Until their God become angry with them, there is nothing you can do against them. And Balak told Balaam, How will I achieve this? He said, Simple. As they are on their way coming, Go to them and go and embrace them and greet them. Carry presents and go and give them. Give them water, give them bread and and begin to kill them. Amen. Hey, why they were coming? They saw them. Oh, people of great God. Ah, we have heard the testimony of your God. We have come in peace. Please, we just came with water and bread for you and wine. Please take from our hands. We have heard how great your God has been. And the people of God carried their things and they pitched their tents. And they began to drink and they began to eat. And Balaam told Balak, he said, From there, as they pitched their tent, begin to invite them to come to your feasts. And as they are coming to your feast, if you can succeed in doing two things, you can pollute them to enter into idolatry. Beginning from what? Eating things sacrificed to idol, which that God has commanded not to do. 
And then if you can get them into sexual immorality, it is not you, but their God will destroy them. And then the people of God, they began to invite them to their to the worship of their God. Because they, they, they so much shower the people of God with so much love and so much and so much goodies. And they felt relaxed. They forgot that they were pilgrims. And they pitched their tent at the border of Moab. Amen. And before you know, when the people of God, because you know, the Moabites served Baal. And you know, Baal is served with Ashtaroth, the male god and the female god. Which is what you have also in Islam. Allah is actually the word, the male god. Amen. I know Muslim worship, you know, you know, the sun and the moon. Amen. In Islam, the moon is the male, then the sun is the female, because they worship sun and moon. Islam. That is what Islam is all about. It's about the worship of Baal. And then the people of God, because in the altar of Baal, there is what is called temple prostitute. What do I call it? Temple prostitute. Yes. Amen. People that are there, men and women, who used to have sex before their God. Because there are two things. The greatest ritual to demonic power to Satan is human blood sacrifice. And the second most powerful ritual to, 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 to Satan is what? Is sexual immorality. And that is why in the worship of Baal and Ashtarot, they used to what? They used to burn children alive. They pass them to what is called the fire of Molech. The children are born alive in sacrifice to Baal and Ashtarot, which is what they call the fire of Molech. So when Israel came and they began to see people dancing naked and having naked sex in the place of dancing, before you know, something began to happen to their body. And before you, before you know, they began to, their body began to do jiri, 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 jiri. And before you know, Israelites begin to partake of the sexual immorality and begin to eat before their idols and worship their idols. And God became, let's go to Numbers 25, Numbers 25. Let's Numbers 25. Numbers 25 from verse 1. And Israel abode in Shitty. Mm -hmm. And the people began to commit war. The people began to commit war. War. Uh -huh. With the daughters of Moab. With the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their God. Uh -huh. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Mm -hmm. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Poah. That is the worship of their, of, their, of their gods. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Take all the heads of the people mm -hmm. and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, mm -hmm. that the, fear, the fierce anger of the Lord may be burned may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it. He rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through their belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 24,000. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Elias, and the son of Aaron, the priest had torn my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Praise the Lord. A land that is given to sexual immorality and idolatry cannot survive the siege of the candidates. A people that are given to idolatry, 
and sexual immorality will not survive the siege of the caliphate, but will definitely be conquered by the caliphate. Because the God that the caliphate worship is a God that is activated and, and activated through immorality and idolatry. So when the people are given to immorality and idolatry, you know what happens? It, is, it will be very easy for them to be conquered by the caliphate. Amen. If there is one battle that we must fight, sir, we must fight against idolatry and immorality among Christians. In our fight for that, you will not succeed. You will not succeed. Praise the Lord. You will not succeed. Amen. Amen. When you let's go to Acts chapter Acts chapter 15, verse 20. Acts 15, 20. Kaduna, a time came when it was noticed that the Christians' gears began to flock the camp of the Muslim boys to the extent that even married women were going to go and sleep with Muslim boys because they were pumping money to them for Kaduna town that they should go and work and be make sure that they commit immorality with the world, with the Christians in their life. Amen. Amen. And as they do it, when they get pregnant, they should make sure they are about it. Amen. Amen. And this went on. As I tell today, Christianity, Christians have been scattered from most of these places I've talked to you today. One of their they know very well that if they can get Christians to be sexually immoral and as a result continue to do abortion the God of the Christians will remain angry with the Christians and they will continue on their conquest agenda. One of the days, I left Kaduna town. They had attacked one of the Islam Kaduna and I was so burdened that morning. And I was going there, I was praying. And as I was praying, I said, oh Lord, please arise. Scatter these people. people. Oh Lord, destroy them. I was praying with God. And suddenly I began to hear in my spirit, the blood of abortion. The blood of abortion. And I say, Lord, what is this? I say, ah, I cannot kill the full and you know, that they are more righteous than my people. That the numbers of children that Christians have bought, amen, in a, in, in a week is more than the numbers of Christians that Muslims kill in Nigeria like, put together in the whole year. So how will it destroy? How will it destroy Muslims? Amen. A friend of a, a, a one Igala woman, she's a widow. She was coming to our ministry. I don't, I don't run church ministry. I run it. She come to our 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 evenings uh, teaching classes. And then one time she was trying to you know get me on phone, and I went for missions. I you know there is no network in, the, in that place. So and then the day I was stepping into Kaduna, my wife uh, called. Uh, no, immediately I got home. My wife told me that, ah, sister, sister, so, so, sister, I've been trying to see you now. So, I'm before, and before, and I don't call her, I say, where are you? I'm back. Come and see me in the office tomorrow. And then she came. And then she came. She saw me. She began to cry. I said, what is happening? She cried. She was she just crying. Because before I traveled, I saw a, 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 a vision about her that she was pregnant. And I called her. I said, sister, you are pregnant. I said, no, Master God forbid, how can I be pregnant? I'm a widow, I don't have a husband. I said, okay, well, I left. And that time she was pregnant. And later, when she was pregnant, she went to the man who pregnant her. Unfortunately, the man was a married man. I was lying to him, lying to her that she was not married. And then she went to her pastor. Her pastor asked her, how can he keep her? How will he feel that she won't terminate the pregnancy? Her pastor. So before I return back, she has already terminated the pregnancy. Church. And one day the girl 
girl woke up in the morning and her mood was very, very haggard. She looked very tattered. She was very downcast. When you look at her, she was so rueful. I know women used to know the mood of their daughters. And the mother asked her, my daughter, why are you like this? What is happening to you? The, the mother persuaded and pestered her until she now began to open up to her mother and told her mother that she saw a dream and did that dream she died. I said, what happened? How? What happened to you? I know, as she went on persuading her daughter, she now opened up to her mother that she is pregnant and she has money with her to go and do her abortion to you. Who pregnant you she couldn't talk? After many pressure, she was able to open up. It was their church pastor that got her pregnant <laughs> and gave her money to go and afford that pregnancy. Tell me, sir, can God fight for us with all this nonsense that is happening here? The mess is so much. The mess is what? The mess in the church is so much. We cannot continue in sin that grace will abound. No way. The Bible said, God forbid. to the pew is so is so is so is so is so is so grievous the Lord speaking in Lamentation chapter 1 see Lamentation 1 6 and 8 he said for Israel has grievously sinned therefore he has fallen grievously sinned praise the Lord we cannot continue the way we are going and think that we can bring down the caliphate it is not possible Acts chapter 15. Let me see from various versions. Acts 15, verse 20. 20, yes. For but that we write unto them uh -huh. that they should abstain from pollution of They should idols. abstain from what? From mm -hmm. pollution of what? Idols. Of idols. And from fornication. And from for the fornication there means sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. They should abstain from what? Because idolatry brings pollution to the people of God. It weakens God's people. It weakens people of God. It brings them back. It brings them under chains. It brought Israel to what? To become what? To, to, to come under the anger of the Lord. So the church of the Lord, the most important thing, you know, what was happening here was the castle of Jerusalem. Where they were causing the issue of seclusion, not seclusion. They said these things are not necessary. There are the church are pointed out some vital articles and things that Christians should do. And among the things that were pointed out, the one of the two major things were what issue of what of the pollution of idols. An issue of what? An issue of what? An issue of what? Of sexual immorality. Because they knew from Bible that one of the greatest way the enemy had always brought of God down is what is true idolatry and what and what and sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. The man called Gideon was a man that God encountered in Judges after season. Remember Gideon? And the Lord at that moment that Israel was under the world, under siege. The, 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 the Philistine and the other people were what? Were impoverishing Israel. Just like the Caliphate is impoverishing us today. Amen. It was a it was a horrible time in Israel. They were, what was it? They will they will plant their, their feet and the and the and the Midianites will come and what and come and ransack the whole that's what they are doing today. And the people of Israel they mourn and lamented by virtue of the oppression of the Midianites. And Gideon was a man who carried burden. He was distressed by what was happening. And the Lord decided to encounter him and gave him the secret. If you want this, please, if you want your people to be liberated from the oppression of the caliphate, of the Florida caliphate of the which was the Midianite, he said you must destroy what? The altars of your father's house and the altars in the land. 
And Gideon rose by night and did what? And went and what? And destroyed the altars of the land. Now, I know what you know. That the Igala land from village to village, there are still altars dedicated to idols everywhere. One of the battles that we must fight, brethren, is the battle of what? To purge our land from idolatry. Go to Igala land. You see, there was a year I came from Medjugorje. That should be 20, either 2013 or so, or 2012. I came to, the Lord is something to go to Medjugorje from Medjugorje. I came directly to Ampa. It was, I think, on the other 20s, other 21st of December. I came directly to Ayamba. I went to CML in Ayamba, and I went to that school, and the Lord asked me to stay there and make it turn over the land and pray over the land. And I was there, alone. So the Lord was instructing me strategically where to go to. I went to one IG organic. There's one IG organic. When I went to that IG, I went there, and in that river, I was seeing a Uloko. They are in the city and they all have their word, their name inscribed, and they are local and they are Praise the Lord. They left. Mm-hmm. 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 Right, please. Praise the Lord. The level I was in, a, in, a, in Aloma, my uncle died, and I went to Aloma to go and see the family. That was last year, around November. And oh, when I got you. to Aloma, I was told that morning, the next morning when I woke up, that a pastor of UC had just died in Aloma. And I saw what happened to him. They say, eh, that he was not sick, that he just died like that. I saw what happened. They say, eh, because he was his turn to do his father's altar, to, to, to be the priest of his father's altar. Yeah. And he refused to come and service the altar because he was a pastor. And those, those powers, they killed this pastor. I was furious in my spirit. How? How? And they say, no, you don't get to know. Oh, I you the I the Pastor of God. Killed by the, uh, the otters. There is so otters. much idolatry in Igala land. Our members, as they are, and you think we can win the battle with this idolatry in Igala the land? The cities they carry money home for Christians in Igala land, you have a battle to fight. Igala land is still submerged deeply in idolatry, despite that Christianity. Am I lying? Be sincere with yourself. You know what I'm talking about now. See, if we cannot remove idols from our land, we will not succeed in this battle. One of the cardinal battles we must fight is the battle against what? Against idolatry in our land. Did you fought that battle? Are you genuine, Bakachi? When Josiah became the king, Josiah fought that battle. You remember Josiah? When you read Second Chronicles chapter from verse 33, Josiah fought the battle against idolatry. He cleansed the land of idolatry. Because one of the reasons why Israel was overrun by Babylon was because the sin of Manasseh. Manasseh. And the sin of Manasseh is the sin of, oh no, the sin of Manasseh is the sin of, the sin of idolatry. We have war to, we are about to fight you. Now, you must, let's go to the books. Sorry, I'm just, because of time, I'm just like that, I can wind up some things. Amen, let's go to the book. Are we there with me? Let's read, is it? If the caliphate must collapse, Jehovah must what? Must judge their gods and judge the gods of, as he judged the God of Egypt. If Jehovah must judge the gods of the caliphate, we must what? We must purge ourselves and our land of wisdom. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's see that Leviticus 26 is very important. Leviticus 26, can we see Leviticus 26 from this one? Let's see one to eight. Let's go to this one to eight. The Lord spoke in strong terms about this issue of idolatry. Leviticus 26 from verse 1. Before that, let's read what is there in the book. It says, the word about Egypt. See, the Lord is seated on a quiet, oh no, on a quick moving cloud. 
and is coming to Egypt. And the false gods of Egypt will be what? Will be troubled that is cut off. As he's coming, and the heart of Egypt will be turned to waters. Amen. Are we there in Leviticus chapter 20? Can we read from verse 1? Leviticus 20 from verse 1. If you are there, you can read for us, please. I shall make you no idol. You shall make you no idol. Uh-huh. No present image. Uh-huh. In a rest, you are a standing image. Mm-hmm. Neither shall he set up uh, on any image of stone in your ha- in your land. Mm-hmm. In your way. In your land. In your land. To bow- Where is our own land? The Igala land. Uh-huh. To bow down unto it. Mm-hmm. For I am the Lord your God. Mm-hmm. You shall keep my Sabbaths mm-hmm. and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Uh-huh. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, uh-huh. and the land shall yield her increase, uh-huh. and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And you shall eat your bread in the f- to the food mm-hmm. and dwell in your land safely. Safely. You say you shall what? There bread. is a condition for them to dwell in their land. How? Safely. Read uh-huh. for that. Okay. And I will give peace mm-hmm. to the land. Mm-hmm. And you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. So God can give peace to a land. Yes. And there will be nobody that will be afraid of the land. God can do it. Uh-huh. And I will read evil peace out of the land. Mm-hmm. Neither shall the curse, excuse me, mm-hmm. shall the sword go through your land. Mm-hmm. And you shall chase your your, your enemies. You shall what? You, chase you shall your chase your enemy. And they shall fall before you by the sword. And they shall do what? They shall fall okay. before you by the sword. Not you falling before them by the sword like it's happening in Nigeria. Uh-huh. And five of you shall chase... How many of you? A hundred. Five. five of you shall chase how many? A hundred. A hundred. A hundred. Do you know that? Wait, do you know that sometimes eh, 50 Fulani invade a community of, uh, of a thousand and they burn down that community and kill Christians mm-hmm. and go free? Yeah. Is that not abnormality? Is that not abnormality? But what he said, he said, we can come to a level whereby how many of us? Five. Five of us shall chase how many? One hundred. One hundred. Uh-huh. Stop there. Uh-huh. And a hundred of you shall mm. put ten thousand to. How many of them? So it does not matter the number of the word of the caliphates. What matter is what? Is whether we are on the side of God and God is on our side. We can come to a level whereby how many of us? Five. Hundred of us can chase how many? Ten thousand of them. We can overrun them. But if you look at it, that is not the way it is today. Because something is wrong somewhere. Help, sir. Continue. Okay. And your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. Mm-hmm. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruit mm-hmm. and multiply you mm-hmm. and establish my covenant with you. Mm-hmm. And you shall eat old stuff. And let's stop the prison. Let's stop the hallelujah. So we can come to a level whereby our victory will not be determined by our numbers. Amen. It will be determined by what? Not by our numbers. Somebody say, you know how many how many how many of these planet are already? How can you chase them away? How can we chase them away? So we can chase them away if we can put our house in order. And the Bible says, you say you shall what? If you what? You'll be diligent to what? To obey my commandment. And the commandment of one of them is what? Idolatry must not be tolerated at all. Amen. Let's go for that. We are still in page 30 of the book. Are we still there? Let's see. It says, for that is a, the next scripture is Ezra. Is there in the book? It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will what? 
and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the world, all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be upon you, for it token upon the house, the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You know, in the context of Egypt, and I told you this morning that the collapse of the Fulani Caliphate in Nigeria is actually in the order of the collapse of the Egyptian Empire of the Bible. You know, every attempt had been made in order to get the people of God free from the captivity of, of, the, of Egypt, of, of, of the Egyptian emperor. Amen. Of Pharaoh. But it didn't work. Every other thing had to. Every effort. Even God had performed several signs and wonders. But they will not let Israel go. Just like Tulani will not let the Nigeria. Just like the Caliphate will not let Nigeria be. Amen. So, and what was it that God did that, that made them to allow the people of God to go? The Lord did judgment against the gods of what? The gods of the, of the, of the, of the, of the I mean, Egyptian gods. Brethren, if you are going to be free, if the caliphate is going to collapse, the Lord himself must judge the gods of the caliphate. Amen. What must he do? He must judge the what? The gods of the caliphate. But brethren, the Lord will not judge the gods of the caliphate if our gods, the gods of our land, are still active. Amen. The Lord will not what? The gods of the caliphate will not be judged if our own gods are still active in the land. For God to pass through a land and judge the gods of the caliphate, the people of God must make sure that there is no idol in that land. Am I saying something here? If Jehovah must pass through Nigeria, pass through Egala land to judge the caliphate, then we must remove, we must destroy every altar that is erected to other gods in our land. Does that not look as a big tax? <laughs> is it not a big tax? But we can do it. We have, we have work to do. That is why I say yesterday, brother, it is not just prayer alone. There is serious work. Who call on the Domagashi? There is work. If we cannot be courageous enough, like Gideon, Gideon was courageous enough to destroy the cause of the land. Because what was empowering their enemy to invade and go free and put them under tributary was what? Was because of their own idols in their land. So it was only when Gideon was able to deal with the idols of his of his people and of the land that he was able, he was empowered to go with how many men? Only 300 men. Gideon took them to battle and came back in victory. Do you know why? Because the powers that were the stumbling block for them had been dealt with. And that is why if you have not been able to deal with your ancestral authors, your, 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 your ancestral authors, you will not prevail in, in, in the land. So there is work to do. And as I was praying, the Lord began to speak to me that there is an alliance between the gods of our various land and the gods of the caliphates. Because the gods of our land are actually small, small God compared to the God the caliphate are serving. Now, what happened is this. You know, the greatest food of demon is, is human blood sacrifice. Like I told you earlier, it's what? Human blood sacrifice. And you know today, one of the reasons why Igala Kingdom was very powerful in those days is because they used to sacrifice human beings. I live, I, I, I was born and I brought up in Ida. Some years ago, you would just hear that somebody is just, they will be announcing that they want to use for a money, like Madonna, go, 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 go. Eh? Before you know, strangers will start missing in it at that time. <laughs> Amen. But you know, those things are not happening today again. So, those idols that you are, that our people trusted and used those days, what, what did that do to you? What did it do to you? To win battle. Inipi was buried alive with how many people? How many people were buried alive with her? Nine people. So that the cause of the land can be strengthened to fight. 
But when last did they sacrifice human beings to those gods? When last? So, and here cometh a people that are ready to sacrifice human beings to the gods of the land. These demons have been stabbed of blood, human blood, for many years. And here come a people that are ready to war. That is why when the flood go to jihad, when they go to jihad, they, they, don't, they kill and slaughter so that they can pour the blood on the ground as a sacrifice to the God of the land. So our various gods in our various land are now what? And now in alliance with the gods of the caliphate. And these gods are now surrendering their land to the gods of the caliphate. And that is the success story of the caliphate as it is today in Nigeria. Amen. For the caliphate to collapse, the cause of the caliphate must be judged in that land. And their God will not be judged until the gods of our land are judged. Are you seeing this in the way it works now? Their God will not be judged because their strength is their gods. For Egypt to Israel to be free from Egypt, the gods of Egypt had to be, to be judged. <coughs> Until when their God was judged, their strength famished. And Pharaoh wake up and say, Oya, na na na, Oya, the man who said they will not go, quickly in a hurry to release them to go. Praise the Lord. So we have work to do over our land. There is a massive returning from the all, all, all over Nigeria. People have returned so much to idolatry. So much to idolatry. Of various forms, I'll show you the forms of idolatry that we have returned to. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Okay, I've spoken about the revelation on the 13th of June, 2021. I've, I've, I've spoken a little bit about this. Amen. I, I, there was something on the line there in page 31. He said, we must also note that Jehovah will not rise up to do judgment against the gods of the caliphate. Amen. Except we would, we rise up and destroy the gods of our land like Gideon and King Josiah. Amen? So that is that. Amen. Let's look at three things. Amen. That must be cut off from our land if the caliphate must collapse. There are three things. You can get that from uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Amen? Are we, we can read it if we have time. We don't have time. Okay, let's read it. I think it's, all, it's already there. He said, in that day... There shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitant of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall be, and it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will do what? What is it going to do? I will cut off the names of what? The, the names of the idols. From where? Out of the land. Amen. And they shall no more be what? Be remembered. Amen. And also I will what? I will curse the prophets. That is talking about false prophets now. Amen. You must not tolerate false prophets in your life. If you must succeed over the caliphate, you must not tolerate false prophets. Please can be of them. If you have false prophets in your land, deal with them decisively. Because they will sell you to the enemy. Amen. Amen. And I what? And I will curse on me to what? To pass out of the land. These three things must be dealt with. The idols of the land, the what? The first prophets in the land and what? And unclean spirits in the land. When you read through, you will understand that better. Amen. 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 Then there is something in page 33. The three kinds of people we must raise. Number one, we must raise Gideon and King Josiah. Those who we what who we break, amen. Their family and village idols, amen. Idolatrous altars and erect altars unto Jehovah, amen. We must raise people that young people, people that we what that we move around the land to what to destroy the altars of the land, amen. And and number two, we must raise kingdom policemen, amen. Those who will monitor the land. And the words, and make sure that no one raises any other altar or makes sacrifice to all to devils in the land. Amen. Amen. In order so that Jehovah will not provoke to anger. Number three, 
Amen. The Finehas. We must raise the Finehas team. And who's at the Finehas? Those who what? Remember Finehas? We read it now in Numbers 25. The one who carried Javelin and did what? And judged the word. The Israelite man and the Moabite woman. Amen. I mean the Moabite, the, the Midianites. Amen. We must raise such people. Hallelujah. We must not tolerate evil in our churches. You know, today they don't do church discipline any longer again. No church discipline. People do anything they like. You just go and do anything you like. You come. Nobody will discipline anybody again today in church. No discipline again. I mean, anything goes in our land. We cannot continue like this. Amen. We must raise people who will keep an eye on our land. Because what happened to immorality is that immorality actually pollutes the land. And idolatry pollutes the land. Amen. Let's see something in Hosea chapter 5. Hosea chapter 5. Let's read Hosea 5. We'll read verse 1 to 5 and then we'll read verse 13 to 15. Hosea. Hosea chapter 5. Verse 1 to maybe 4. Yeah, there you can read this. Christianity today. They come to church, but their life is not the right to about. There is a spirit in our midst. It's called the spirit of what? The spirit of water. It's our land. So the people no longer what? He said, for they have not framed their doings to what? To turn to the Lord. Do you now know why people are not turning to God? That's how it's happening. Amen. Their hearts are getting hardened by the day. There is what? There is an influence over the land. And what is that influence? The spirit of what? The spirit of war don't miss in our midst. Read further. And they have not known the Lord. They have not known the Lord. And the pride of Israel doth testify, doth testify to his face. Let's go to verse 13 now. Verse 13. Okay. When Ephraim saw mm-hmm. the sickness and Judah saw the wound, mm. then went Ephraim to the Assyria and went to King Jerah. Yet could he not heal you, nor can you cure you of your wound. Continue, sir. Okay. For I will be unto Ephraim. Who? God. The Lord said, I will be unto who? Ephraim. Unto Ephraim, eh? As a lion. As a lion. And as a young lion mm-hmm. to the house of Judah. Uh-huh. I. Even I will tear mm-hmm. and go away. Mm-hmm. I will take away and none 
shall rescue rescue him. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place mm -hmm. till they acknowledge their offense mm -hmm. and see my and seek my face. Mm -hmm. In their affliction, they will seek me. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Now, what the caliphate are doing to Alan is that as they are sending their people to come to our land, one of their strategy is to make sure that the land is defiled, is polluted through water. Now, I went to, we we're, were in a place in a in a, in Bukos, local government of Plateau State, in Dafo district, went there to go and enlighten them. And while we were talking, they began to tell us what is happening in their land. Amen. That the full and new people are using sham on their women to be sleeping with them, even married women. Now, if you go to the far north now, the full and new are going around doing protective charm for Christians to protect them against the, the Fulani, fighting against them. The same Fulani. Mm. They are going around the land, giving our boys charm for protection, to protect them against Fulani. Now, they are even going around churches in the city. I went to the pastor in Lagos, telling me that, and now some man came to him, telling him that he has charm that will make church to grow. Mm. And now some man making charm. They are, make, they are going around churches, giving pastors charm to make church to grow. Giving pastors time to make them to get good promotion. And your members patronizes them in the land. You know what is their target? To defy the world, the land, defy the house of God, so that they can continue to prevail. It's strategic. I learned that some times ago that uh, this other man, I don't know how true is it, that uh, this man wanted to become governor of Church. He said it was the time he was giving in Ayangba, he was giving Muslim boys uh, money to one of pregnant Christian girls. I don't know if you heard of it. I heard of that thing. How many of you heard of it? I heard it. You heard it also? In Ayangba here also, man. 10,000. 10,000 for Muslim boys to go and what? To go and sleep with Christian girls. What do you think they are looking for? It's part of what? It's part of their strategy. Amen. And we, we are not doing anything to stop this ongoing evil. And you want to win the battle? Where you are fallen for the strategy of, of Balaam? Balaam told Balak, if you can get them into immorality and get them into idolatry, then you can continue the world to prevail against them. Brethren, we must set a structure to check what is going on in our land. Amen. We must do what? A structure must be set. We must checkmate the, our, the, our lives. Amen. It is very important, man. We can't fold our hand and watch our youth live the life they are living in. It's not, it's not profitable to us. Our land is dignified. Our enemy is being empowered. Because the cause of the caliphate is empowered when immorality is being committed. Because every immorality outside legitimate marriage is actually, is actually a worship of the devil. And that is why we must belt it up. We must say no. You know what the Bible said? You say, whosoever defiles his, destroy his body, what will happen? God will destroy him. Is that also? Because the sin of humanity brings destruction from the Almighty. And they know this fact. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's look at the, some of the things that uh, we must fight against. Amen. Various, number 10, verse 33. He said, various forms of idolatry, a amen, and idol altars that we must contend against. Number one is what? Is idols of what? Of the of idols in the heart. Ezekiel talks about the idols of the heart, people that have idols in their heart. When you read that scripture, you understand. Number two is what? Is worship of men of God. It's an idol. Some people today now, when you look at them, they put the picture of their pastor. When you go to their house, the picture of their pastor is in their house. Amen. Some people on their car, the picture of their pastor, touch not that belong to so, 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 so man of God. Some people now are now wearing the picture of their pastor in their, in their neck as necklace, as a sign of protection. Amen. They even pray the name of their pastor as a sign of protection. So as long as they carry the bangle that bear the name of their pastor, nothing can happen to them. Or they should. They are protected. That is idolatry. Amen. That 
That is what is happening. The idolatry worship. There is a great worship for men of God today in our in, in the churches. It's part of idolatry that God abhors. And if we continue that thing, we cannot conquer the caliphate. Amen. Are we still here with me? Obeying men of God instead of what? Instead of obeying God. Some people, God tell them something. They will, they will go to the pastor, tell them another thing. They will throw the word of God, tell them, and use the one man of God, tell them. That is idolatry. Amen. Respecting the rich. Amen. And despising the poor. That is idolatry also. Using or hanging images, pictures of pastors on our bodies, house, offices, and property. These are forms of idolatry. Number three. Amen. Worship of mammon. Amen. Worship of what? Mammon. Talking about what? The Lord talked that you cannot worship God and mammon at the same time. So many of us, the world we worship today is money. Amen. We worship money. We can do anything because of money. Amen. Praise God. Number four. Eating of things. Of meat slaughtered by Muslims. Amen. Or idol worship. When you read, I think we have read that place and so several scriptures. When you eat things that aren't meat that is sacrificed by Muslim or by idol worshippers, you know what you are doing? You are actually into idolatry. You don't know like, don't, don't know that? Revelation chapter 3 said so. No, 2 said so. He said, for they have them that hold on to the doctrine of Balaam, who teach my, things, my children to eat things sacrificed to idols. Amen. When you eat things sacrificed to idols, you know that every every cow meat that the Muslim kills is actually meat sacrificed to idols. Do you know that? And that is why the Muslim has made sure that in Nigeria, in every place where they kill cow, it is the Muslim that must kill the cow. I don't know of Anpa here. Do you know why? Because they understand the principles of earth governance. That when you slaughter an animal and dedicate it to a god, it becomes a food dedicated to that god. And that is why a Muslim will not eat meat that Christians kill. Yeah. Are you not aware of that? They don't eat meat that. For you, you just chop anything. One of the greatest way the Muslims are weakening Christian Nigeria is through, through, through cow meat that they kill. It's actually, they are, they are used to pollute Christians. And that was what they said in Acts chapter, chapter 20. That you should, 15 is your best, 15 to 20. He said you should not, you should abstain from meat sacrificed to what? To idols. And before the Muslim kill animal, they sac- they what? They dedicate it to Allah. There is a surah they recite before they slaughter animal. And that is why they will not eat the one you kill. Because when you kill it, you kill it in the name of Jesus. And you are doing church program. You go and call Muslim boys to come and eat cow for you. And dedicate it which you want to eat to idols. And that is why in some locations now, Christians are beginning to raise their own abatoa now. Buy their meat, slaughter it, and sell themselves. It's happening just, not only just, even in Impat Madama, it's happening. In Tarapa, Ta- 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 it's happening now. They don't eat meat killed, so they now have Christians abattoir. They buy their own animals, slaughter it themselves, and sell to Christians. You must watch it. It's part of their strategy. And that is why the voice of Christians, at the point the Lord told me, you see, one of the reasons why the voice of the church is not being heard is because their voice is being what? It's being suppressed through eating meat sacrificed to idols. Through eating cow meat that's slaughtered by Muslims. Because every slaughterhouse in Nigeria is, is what? Is an, is, is an altar dedicated to Allah. Every slaughterhouse. That is why if you go to, go and check around Nigeria. Every, every government slaughterhouse is only Muslim that slaughter animals. Why? Because they know what they are doing. Ah, Even Akbar here. So there must be a change. There must be what? There must, he said they must not ask, ask. It was a, an issue to the early church that they must not eat things sacrificed to what? To devils, to idols. It is part of idolatry. If you kill cow, are there not Christians that are buoyant enough to finish one cow here? If you cannot finish a cow, you push cause. Please, these things are things we are put in, in, in place. Buy and buy and, buy and, buy and even kill your people are there to to, 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 to buy it. If 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 you put, if at can level you say you you strategize very well. It is not as simple as you think. The Lord will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. You know we don't have time. I'm trying to rush a lot of things. Praise the Lord. I don't even know this time now. When, um, when his time is uh, about to wind up, he let me know so that I can begin to wind up. Praise the Lord. Let's see. What point are we now? Amen. Number five. What is number five? 
He said the use of charms. Amen. Keeping charms in the house. Amen. In the body. Amen. Bearing charms or using charm for what? For protection. For business. You know, some of our church members, they used to they, they give them charms. Some of the people that come to our church, they give them charm for businesses. They give them sources, soap. They give them different, different things. Charm for business. So they say this is just for business. Magba, Amado, Kehile, Abe, Amado. Amile, Amako, Yuma, Wole, Mako, 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 Tofe, Abajama. Those things are idolatry. Some people in church are doing it. And what are doing? They are, that is why we cannot stand before the enemy. There are so many things we are doing that we don't even know that these are the things wicked in us. Hallelujah. Let's go to point number six. Amen. Supporting or participating in masquerade, cultural or what, or paganistic festivals. So many of us here, so many of our members, they may not go for the festival, but they used to send money during the festival. Amen. Supporting masquerade. And you know, supporting, you know, so, uh, somebody, one of our, our, our town person in, uh, in Lagos uh, was saying, uh, Mayuti, Yimashi Begu, Maluti, Yashi Begu. Ibegu, like a chicken, and Yashi Begu. I'm looking at my one is a dog, Mamma Shibu, Mach Mada, Atamadua, Kumashi Begu. I don't know much big with me and by me. Ibegu, Masha, I do it. Unia, Egua, Masha, Egua, Adiba, Masha, Egua, 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 when I share, come and I share. By Benny, give what is that to Caesar? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to buy it. By Benny, where I keep you, you should where keep this is a way of the Caesar. I'm going to buy it. Take a boy at church. My God, when you march, you go march. You go to Yama. You march. 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 And yet we want to collapse the caliphate. We are jokers. These things must be addressed. These are part of the reason why we are where we are today. Can you follow why I should be sitting here? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to my silence bar. Many gala prominent people have left Kogi, have left Kogi, and they are not returning because of Beru. Can we learn why? How did he get to this to, to this extent? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number what are we now? Seven. We're number seven. Allowing Muslims to what? To raise mosques in our land. Amen. Every mosque is what? Is an idol altar. And we defile and pollute our land. Sir, why did those boys are going to your village? It's not because of the what they want to sell. They are paying them. They are all they are all of the payroll from their caliphate, from their uh, emir, from their sultanate where they came from. Hmm. Every emir has boys that they send to land and they pay them their own, their own payroll. They are there to put an altar in your land because every mosque is an idolatrous altar that speaks over the land. Those of you who don't have mosque in your village, better tell them, better stop it, don't allow it to be. the Lord. So there is much, much, much to talk about. Amen. So you can go through that. Let's look at number four briefly and one or two so that we can stop for today and take question. Number four, fourth step to collapse the caliphate. What is the number four step? Wage spiritual warfare to what? To prevail against what? The spirit of what? The spirit of the caliphate or the spirit behind the word, behind the caliphate. Amen. The strong man must what? must be bound. Can we see that scripture there? He says what? He says, okay. No man, no man can what? Can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except the what? Except he will first bind the what? The strong man. And then he will spoil his house. Mark chapter 3 verse 27. We must wage a spiritual warfare against the what? The spirit of the caliphate in order to what? To demoralize and paralyze their strength. Amen. Do you know that every Muslim is possessed? Mm -hmm. Every Muslim is what? Is possessed. What they are doing, they don't do it under the eye. They are doing it because they are what? They are under an influence. They are possessed with the spirit. 
And that is why if a Muslim convert and is not proper deliverance is not conducted, he will still go back to Islam. And that is what one is the only thing that is happening. Many of them have come out, but they have gone back to Islam. Because proper deliverance was not conducted. It is not ordinary. They are under a satanic influence. So, and there is no way we can collapse the caliphate if we have not what? If we have not bound the strong man of the caliphate. The strong man must be bound. Amen. And that is why you must be strategic in your intersection. In your prayers against the growth of Islam in, in Ankara, you must address the spirit of Islam. There is a spirit behind Islam. There is a spirit behind the caliphate. There is a spirit empowering them. And you know, once their spirit is bound, their courage will be lost. Why they are so excited and so courageous and so forceful in their advancement is because they are what? They are under an influence. So if we must conquer them, we must what? We must bound their spirit, their spirit that is controlling them. We must bring their spirit under power. Hallelujah. Amen. You think the Jehovah power, what he's doing, is doing ordinary? How, how do you imagine your fellow Igala man now telling Igala people that you cannot build a place to worship your own Lord? You think it's ordinary? My brother was talking about what is happening in, in, in that place where you, you call it the. Uh, what name do you call that your place? Uh, there's a name you call that. Liberia Houses. I say that is real Liberia. <laughs> Liberia Houses. Those guys are controlled by the spirits. And that is why they go about doing all manner of evil. Islam is all about evil things. To kill. How do you imagine that somebody kills the blood of man being and lick the blood? In Kabbalah, those days, when do they they will kill and then lick the blood, suck the blood. If it's, they are not in their normal senses, once they begin to chant Allah Akbar, that spirit is provoked and they begin to do what they cannot do ordinary. Amen. Somebody just lied that somebody used somebody used Quran to clean his bumbo and threw it on the ground and began to shout Allah Akbar. And when the people ran and came, he said it was, it was somebody else, a Christian, that did it. And before you know, they bundled that person and slaughtered him and carried his head and began to parade the streets. You think it's ordinary? There is a spirit behind Islam. And we must begin to address that spirit. In your intersection in the land, you must address what? You must bound the spirit of behind their sources. Praise the Lord. To kill human beings is not like anything to them. It's like it's a clean chicken. Human being, Abba, it's not ordinary. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray that the Lord will help us to be strategic in addressing, you know, the spirit behind, you know, the caliphate in our activities. When you read the book, you will get more of that. Let's rush to uh, page this. Let me take one or two things before we begin to take questions and start rounding up. Amen. Let's go to page 42. Amen. Fifth and six steps to collapse the Islamic Caliphate. Step five. We must labor to enlighten all non-Muslims about the word, about the Fulani ethnic agenda of superiority and word and conquest. This will set them against themselves. Amen. We must work. We must labor to work. To enlighten the world. One of the things that is happening now is gradually some of the houses are beginning to be enlightened about the Fulani ethnic agenda. One of the good things that is happening now, the Yoruba Muslims now are beginning to work. Some of the Yoruba Muslims are saying that they, don't, they, are, they are no longer part of the Sukkot Caliphate again. They are coming up because they have discovered. You know, if you go to Yoruba land, the Muslim, if you go to the north. Now, let me give you this story. In my degree, somebody told me a story, life story in my degree. An Igala boy was a student of the University of Meduguri. And the time to call prayer came. And he was a, 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 a far from, a, a from whom. He used to call prayer from whom. He's a man from, from, from Igala land before he went to the University of Meduguri. So when the time came for him, for them to call prayer, the, 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 the Al-Safal and guy that used to call prayer was not around, has not come. And this Igala guy went and began to call prayer. So 
When he started calling prayer, then the people now, now, now came and now God said, how come that that army is calling prayer for us? And they began to mobilize to kill him when he finished calling prayer. And the information leaked, and some of them who had good hearts told their people that if this boy finished calling prayer, they will slaughter him here. So, and they had to go and alert the security. And security rushed down to the mosque. Immediately he finished calling that prayer, they had to take him away straight from the school. And they now found that they must kill that boy, they must kill him. This Igala boy had to run from Medjugorje. He didn't finish in Vessel Medjugorje. He withdrew from Vessel Medjugorje. And he left Medjugorje and he didn't come back because they vowed to kill him. And they are the same Islam. During the Kanu crisis, I went to Kanu, I went to see my uncle. My uncle was telling me that a one of Igala Muslim, when they finished calling, praying, they brought him out and they slaughtered him in Kanu. Must begin to educate our people that this what they are looking Islam is actually what they use it as a conquest tools. We must begin to educate our people to understand that Islam is what is a slavery religion. They use it as what they use it as what as a tools to conquer ethnic groups. It's a bait. We must begin to educate our people that you don't have a future in Islam. And the Lord will help us to do that too. Amen. Our people are just wasting their time. Upon all their Muslim, how many of them were giving good position in Buhari government? They only you bring them to put a place where they can use them to do what they want to do. When they finish, they will remove them and do what they want. They are only fooling our people in Islam. So let's educate our people also. Let's try to what, educate them. I educate them a lot. They want to admit, don't waste your time. You don't have a future here. You will be a slave here. And they know it. Go and check their mosque. I'm done, I don't know. In most places, they have house and mosque. Where, where they used to, where the malam is, that is where they go. They, when, 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 when it's not a house of flying that is there, they will come there. When They will not come when you are calling prayer. When you come there, they will come and watch their leg and do their prayer and go because you are not good enough to, be, to do prayer for them. It must be a full animal. So let's know this truth and let's what? Let's also try to what? To educate our people. That this place you are, they will use to conquer you. And when they conquer you, they will put an emir. And the emir will be a full animal to rule over you, the indigenous people. And that's why they are bringing their people to flock the land. They are what? Their people are coming to what? So that they can outnumber the indigenous and become and put an emir in the land. Before you know, I don't know how they have Siriki, Siriki House Awa in in, in, in Makoti. I mean, uh, in, in the Alpha. Do they have Alsa Alsa King? Yes. Yeah. 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 So why would they have Alsa King in, in your own land? And you know, the Igala Onu Igala in Kano does not have a palace. Does not. It's not. It's not actually recognized as it were. Mm. But their own, it will be more. Now, they 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 they. they, they uh, the, the, uh, what I call it, the, the Secretary of State of America came to Lagos. He didn't go to the hub of Lagos. He went to the Hausa King of Hausa King of Lagos. And can you imagine that? So Islam is they, they use Islam, they full and they use Islam to what as a conquest tool in Nigeria. And our people must what must be aware. It's not a religion. Islam is what is what is a satanic cult of conquest. Amen. And the Lord will help us in Jesus. Let's see point number seven so that uh, we can. Is it number six now? Number six, step six, step six, page 45. Amen. Space step, are you there? Page 45? It says, six steps to collapse the Islamic caliphate. Infiltrate the camps of the caliphate. Frustrate the plans of the word, the plan or councils of the caliphate by infiltrating their camps through the wisdom of David. Talking about the Kushai strategy. Remember that when uh, David's son was fighting against David, Absalom, you know what Absalom, the case of Absalom, 
you know, Hushai came to the camp of David, and David said, no, he will not go with us. You know what they do for us? Go back to the camp of Absalom and go and stay there. And then, so that you can be able to tell me of his strategy. Amen. And Hushai went and what? And submitted to Absalom. And was there. But who was he working for there? And when Ahitophel had given his counsel, who shall I say I had a better counsel, my lord, my king? And who shall I give a counter counsel? And the counsel of who shall I was accepted, was adopted. Mm. And that was why Absalom went out. I mean, uh, 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 Abs- uh, Ahitophel went and hanged himself. And before you know, the man sent spies to go and prepare him. Amen. Now let me. When were in Meduguri during the time of late Bishop Hanaman, who was an Anglican Bishop? We had we had people who used to go to mosque every Juma and every mosque service. They go there as Muslims. They go and join them in the prayers, so that there was no plan that they had at the time of that man that was not quickly known to the Christians. Amen. But later, you know, because other camp group came and they didn't sustain it, so that thing died out. So that was why they didn't know the plan until when the book of them came and began to do what they did. I have not stopped it. If you are going to collapse the caliphate, we must be deliberate in what? In sending our own kingdom spies to their midst. You will have one or two Christians here who are formerly Muslims now. You can make them to feel as if they have gone back to Islam. I, I, I know an Anglican bishop, an Anglican reverend in, a reverend in Abuja. Every Juma Friday, he goes to the National Mosque. And when they finish the Juma prayer, he will sit down with them and they will be discussing issues and they will be hearing how their issues, their discussion about what they want to do to the church and how they want to pray. Hmm. You must be deliberate. If we must collapse the caliphate, we must what? We must sponsor people to their midst. We must have people who are very close to them, who get regular information. You must know everything they are saying about the church and about the conquest of them. You must have information. You must be strategic. I don't know how God is going to help you, but I'm telling you what you need to do. Sir, you must have people who will sponsor to their name. And that is why the Makali Church have some priests who they send to go and study Islam. And after studying Islam, they are they are there, they think they are Muslim, but they are not Muslims. They are Christians. Amen. So there are a lot of things to do. Does it look impossible, sir? No, it's not impossible. We can do it. Amen. We can what? We can do it. So that through this rule, their cancel can what? Can be frustrated because they are on course in mission, but their plans can be thwarted. So I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our time is fast spent this evening. Let's take questions. Amen. As God will help us. And contribution. I think we have been able to arrive at point number six. Yes. We have looked at how many points this evening? Four points this evening. Yes. And we looked at two in the morning. Amen. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I will see the fall of the caliphate in our land. As we begin to strategically, you know, ask God for wisdom to be able to work, to adopt these steps. Amen. Praise the Lord. Such that if they plan any evil tomorrow, before they, uh, they are finished planning, you are also receiving a call. Do you know that the caliphate have people in the, in the Christendom that give them permission? And Salif was telling us what happened when he was Khan, Khan, uh, Khan General Secretary. That each time they finish doing a meeting of Khan, in the next 30 minutes, he will get information that the candidate are already aware of what is the resolution of Khan. They have pastors. The last national uh, can use election. You know that the candidate sponsor or the candidate that won that election. It was the candidate that sponsor. The candidate that sponsor the candidate. They will be doing that. Amen. Even the one you are thinking is a Christian.
Christians, the Christians, the Christians. Sometimes they are sponsored by the Caliphate. They are lonely. And that's not the point where they have. The Lord will help us in Jesus. So please let me put some contribution. Questions and contribution, if there is any. Okay, sir. They said, when is the next session tomorrow? Nine. And when are we closing? Yeah, to close when, sir? To close when? Um, between, sorry, no specific time, but it's like tomorrow's session will be longer since uh, it's the work for the day. And it's the last thing. We can close uh, between one and two. So that we can return to our judges and prepare for Sunday service. Okay. I ask this question because uh, of what I find in the morning, this morning. The Lord bless you, beloved brethren, in the Lord. Uh, I am your brother, Moses or George Enemy, God Special, the coordinator of the National Restoration Program here in Lagos State, in Lagos, Nigeria, from where we move into Nigeria from state to state on the National Restoration Program, a program that is inspired and designed to be able to prepare Nigeria tribe by tribe, state by state, local by local government for the coming great visitation of the Lord upon our nation to collapse the caliphate, to, re to revive and restore our nation. The Lord bless you as you continue to partner with us. You, paraventure, you want to get the book from where this message comes from. The book, uh, the, the 16th step to collapse the caliphate and restore a nation. You can refer to the Amazon bookshop, Amazon bookstore. You can also get the part one of the same book from Amazon bookstore and other books. The seven prophetic steps to bat the new Nigeria also available on Amazon bookstore. The Common Prophetic Colossus of Islam, available on Amazon Bookstore. The Book of the Prophets of Nigeria, understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches now, understanding the ongoing bloodshed in Nigeria, and several, several of our books are on Amazon Bookstore. I want to believe that uh, you will go look for them and then get details. The Lord bless you. Please don't forget to subscribe and help us to, you know, you know, share this, uh, you know, message with other uh, people who are connected to you. God bless you. But eventually, you need hard copy. Of these books, you can get us on uh, 08033921213. Is a WhatsApp number. Let me tell it again. 08033921213. If you are outside Nigeria, you can add our code plus 234 to that number. Then you get us. You can send us a chat. You can ask your questions. And then if you want to invite us for teaching engagement in your church or in your community or your tribe, you can also contact the same number. The Lord bless you. Shalom. Maranatha. Maranatha. Hosanna. Bless you. Bless you.